1963, uh, a philosopher, Edmund Gettier, wrote a, a short paper, only like two pages, called Is Knowledge Justified True Belief? And in that essay, he attempted to show that the traditional view of knowledge uh, as justified true belief is false. So let me go over that essay. Uh, epistemology is the theory of knowledge. It, it's an examination of what knowledge is, what are the conditions of knowledge, and so on. So going back to Plato, for a couple thousand years, the traditionally accepted view of knowledge is for something, for knowledge to be a fact, I mean, for you to know something, three things must be the case. What you believe must be true. Uh, for, you to, for you to have knowledge, uh, you have to, what, what you think you have knowledge of must be true. You have to believe it. If you don't believe something, you can't know something. And, and you must have a good reason for believing what you believe. So the way it's often, the way Gettier puts it, and this is, this is not his formulation, it's in the, in the philosophical literature. S knows that P, so S, the subject, knows that P, P can be any proposition, like it's raining outside, today is Monday, cats are animals, and so on. S knows that P, if and only if, that's IFF stands for if and only if, if what? P is true. You can't know something that is not true. So if you know that, for example, it's raining outside, it's raining outside must be true. So P is true. Uh, you cannot know something unless you believe it. So S believes, believes that P. So uh, if I know that it's raining outside, it must be raining outside. I must believe it's raining outside and I must be justified. S is justified in believing s is justified believe in believing in believing that p okay so if i know something if i know that it's raining outside I'm, i must believe it it must be true and i must be justified in believing it so how would i be justified know it's raining outside i could say i looked outside looking is sufficient to know it's raining outside. I'm not just guessing. Okay, so that's, I mean, that's pretty much, uh, I think uh, most people, uh, that was accepted basically for a couple thousand years. You are, uh, in uh, you know something, if, if what you, you know, for example, P, whatever P is, if P is true, if you believe it, and if you're justified in believing it. What Gettier attempted to do in his uh, little essay is knowledge justified true belief is to show that that definition doesn't work. And he did it through a counterexample. He did it uh, through showing, coming up with an example where someone has all, someone know, uh, 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 know, claims to know that P is true, believes that P is true, is justified in believing is true, and P is true, and yet he does not have knowledge. And here's how the exam example goes. Take two people, Smith and Jones. They're applying for a job. They're waiting in the waiting room. And Smith uh, notices that Jones has 10 coins in his pocket. So Jones takes his coins out of his pocket and Smith counts them. There are 10 coins. When Smith goes into the interview, he is told by the person doing the hiring that Jones is going to get the job. And, he, and, the, and the, the person that tells him that is the person doing the hiring. So he is justified in believing that Jones is going to get the job. He's also justified in believing that uh, the person who gets the job has 10 coins in his pocket because he's justified in believing that Jones will get the job. He's also justified in believing that Jones has 10 coins in his pocket because he counted them. And therefore, he's justified in believing that the person who will get the job has 10 coins in his pocket. Okay, now this is what happens. For some reason, the person doing the hiring changes his mind and actually hires Smith. Smith actually gets the job, not Jones. And unbeknown to Smith, Smith himself had 10 coins in his pocket. He didn't know it, but he did have 10 coins in his pocket. So it, it turned out that the person who got the job, the, 
one who got the job person that got the job had 10 coins in his pocket 10 coins in his pocket now the question is did uh, Smith know that the person who was going to get the job had 10 coins in his pocket it turned out that the person who did get the job did have 10 coins in his pocket but no one would say that Smith knew that the person who got the job had 10 coins in his pocket because it's obvious that he just got lucky uh, when Smith uh, believed that the person was going to going to get his job get the job had 10 coins in his pocket he believed that because he thought Jones was going to get the job he was justified in believing that Jones was going to get the job he was justified in believing that Jones had 10 coins in his pocket therefore he was justified in believing that the person who got the job had 10 coins in his pocket now the the justified true belief theory says knowledge is you have you you can know that P is you know P if three things or if th it meets if three criteria are met P is true okay in this case P was true the person who got the job had 10 coins in his pocket you believe that P and, and Smith did believe P he, he believed the person who got the job would have 10 point coins in his pocket and uh, you're justified in believing it and Smith was justified in believing that the person who got the job who would get the job would have 10 coins in his pocket so he all those three conditions were met and yet this is an example where no one would would uh, claim it's obvious that no one that that's that Smith did not know that the person who would get the job had 10 coins in his pocket he didn't know it because it was pure luck it was just pure coincidence that he himself had 10 coins in his pocket and and that he would get the job now so that is supposed to be a counterexample to the traditional definition of knowledge that uh, at, that you know P is true that s knows P if and only if P is true s knows that P if only is if P is true s believes that p and s, s is justified in believing that p and in this case all the conditions were met and yet it we it's obvious that s did not know that p even though all three conditions were met and so the the implication the, the conclusion that Gettier draws is that the traditional definition of knowledge must be mistaken that was in 1963 and up until so the last today's 2020 so it's been like uh, about 60 years since uh, Gettier uh, wrote this paper and uh, it <clears throat> his paper radically altered epistemology because now uh, many 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 people have been trying to answer Gettier to try to see if they can fix up the traditional definition so his, that was a revolutionary paper. It's only like less than two pages, but in that paper he attempted to overthrow 2,000 years of philosophy of the common sense understanding of what it means to know something. You know something, say P, if P is true. You can't know something that's not true. Uh, so you can't know something if it's not true. So if you know P, then P must be true. You can't know something if you don't believe it. So you have to believe that P is true. And you don't, it can't simply be that P is true. You have to be justified in believing that P is true. Uh, if you're not justified in believing that P is true and yet P is true, you don't know it. Like, for example, I could say right now that it's raining in New York City. Let's say I believe it. And let's say it is raining in New York City. So I believe it. Uh, it is raining. P is, I believe P. P is true. But the question is, am I justified in believing it? And I'm not. I'm just guessing. Uh, and let's say I'm right. I'll say I guess right that it is raining in, in, in New York. So I'm not justified in believing it. I just I get I get I guess to, uh, I just got lucky. So all three conditions to know to know that P is true, it has to be true. You have to believe that P is true, and you have to be justified in believing the true that P is true. What Gettier did with the example of Smith and Jones is to show that Smith believed his belief that the person who got the job 
who would get the job had ten would have ten coin had ten coins in his pocket. What he believed is true. Uh, the person who did get the job did have ten coins in his pocket. Smith got the job, not Jones, but Smith himself had ten coins in his pocket, and he got the job. So P is true. Uh, Smith believed that the person who got the job would have ten coins in his pocket, so he believed it. And he was justified in believing it. He was justified in believing that the person who would get the job had to, would have 10 coins in his pocket because he was justified in believing that Jones would get the job and he was justified in believing that, that Jones had 10 coins in his pocket because he counted them. And yet, it's obvious that Smith did not know that the person who would get the job had 10 coins in his pocket because it was pure luck. Smith got the job. He did not think he was going to get the job. He thought Jones would get the job. And it just happened by total coincidence and total luck that Smith had 10 coins in his pocket. So that is offered as a counterexample to the definition of knowledge. When, whenever a definition is given uh, of, any, of anything, uh, one way to test that definition, and this is very important for philosophy because a lot of philosophy deals with this, uh, Socrates does, if you read Platonic Dialogues, Socrates does this all the time. He will ask a person, you know, what is courage? What is justice? What is piety? They will give a definition. And then often Socrates will proceed to give a counterexample. So whenever anybody offers a definition of something, one way to test to see if it's a good definition is to try to find a counterexample. <clears throat> like if somebody says, for example, that all dogs are black, let's say all dogs are black animals so, you know i'm just making up some stupid definition let's say somebody offers as a definition how do you how can you show that that's not a good definition well all you have to do is find one counter example find one dog that is a dog um that is not black that will disprove the definition it will show that the definition of the person's definition of dog is is false that's what that's what Gettier did in this definition the definition is s knows p if and only if s if and only is, if P is true, S believes that P and S is justified believing that P. So he takes those three conditions, those three elements that have to be met, and he comes up with a counterexample in which uh, S uh, no, uh, in, in which P is true. In P, in this case, the person who gets the job has 10 coins in his pocket. P is true. Uh, S believes that P is true. Smith believed P, believed that the person that would get the job, had 10 coins in his pocket, and he was justified in believing it. And that, that uh, example, this counterexample, he gave another example, counterexample, he gave two. Uh, I'll just focus on this one because there's no point in going to another one. This, this one makes the point. Uh, so anyway, this is supposed to show that, that the definition, traditional definition of knowledge is, is wrong. And so how, what do you do? How do you deal with that? I myself do not actually think this is a counterexample. Um, I believe that uh, that when you're talking about, when you say that S is justified in believing that P, for example, Smith is justified in believing that the person who gets the job has 10 coins in his pocket. It, justification has to be, for me, justification has to include the reasoning process. I mean, it has to include the way the premises are related to one another. In this case here, Smith is justified in believing that P is true, that the person who will get the job has 10 coins in his pocket only on the basis of the of Jones getting the job. So I would say that he's justified in, what he's justified in believing is this, the person who gets the job, assuming that it's Jones, has 10 coins in his pocket. That to me is what he's justified in believing. He's not simply justified in believing just as, as an absolute truth that the person who gets the job has 10 coins in his pocket. He's justified in believing that the person who gets the job is Jones who has 10 coins in his pocket. So I, I personally think that this, uh, that Gettier's example is really, Gettier's essay is uh, as Shakespeare would say, much to do about nothing. Um, anyway, that's just my own personal opinion. You could read, uh, there's a big, vast literature on it. You could check it out. And actually, you could actually write your final paper on it. That'd be a good, interesting thing to do.